My name is Sandy Trout. I live in Fort St. John. I grew up as a part of a military family and we lived on base, bases. And it was a very, oh, what do I want to say? It wasn't a colorful <laughs> background. Mm -hmm. Tarmac, Quonset huts, row housings. It was just sort of gray and tan and black. <laughs> when I went to university in Colorado. Suddenly I was in the midst of the Rocky Mountains and the beautiful colors and the streams and the wildness and I felt so at home. And so part of uh, why we came here was because it was very similar to where we lived. And uh, we spent most of our time, all of our free time out in the mountains and riding horses. And it's the thing that makes my heart sing. Well, are these beautiful, um, vistas, you know, from here. How long would you say you've been a professional artist? Like, how, what was that kind of transition like? I would, I think I'm going to say nearly 20, no, just a minute, not quite that long, maybe more 15 years. Yeah. Since juried into the Federation of Canadian Artists. And um, I really immersed myself in it. I mean, I can paint <laughs> all day sometimes. <laughs> I don't, I'm kind of a late bloomer. And after putting it off for so long, I have just given myself permission, you know, if this is what I want to do, spending the day doing, I'm good with it. And there are lots of opportunities to work with other artists, to sell your work, to show your work, and it just sort of, and to gift your work. There's just, you know, it's just a delightful journey. I approach art like a student. I know that I have a lot more to learn. and. I love learning. I love the challenges of trying to solve problems. This will sound funny, but I will explain. I feel I'm easily seduced <laughs> because I keep seeing things that makes me curious. Like, how did they do that? The first, uh, I think it was through a workshop, the first experience I had with acrylics that, you know, it just was, this is what I need to do, at least for now. I love the vibrancy. I love the fact you can make lots of changes. I like the fact that you, the, uh, different techniques that work, that medium worked well with. Printmaking was not something that had caught my attention until Mary and another, her friend Mary, both from Dawson Creek, uh, gave Flying Colors a, a, a sh small, a short workshop. And wow, you know, it, it was really fun. And, and I've, I have taken a lot of workshops with different processes. And now I've kind of narrowed it down to the ones that really call to me. And I find it a really nice natural balance between painting. You know, there's still the composition and the, you know, the elements and principles of art you need to pay attention to. But I find that something I learn in printmaking kind of transfers sometimes to my paintings and vice versa. And it's nice to have, um, something a little different if you need a little respite from one to the other. And I am in, totally enjoying printmaking. It's, I think I'm, I would call myself a painter mostly. And printmaking is kind of my affair. <laughs> but, but it's, um, it's wonderful. Sometimes I, I can't sleep at night sometimes because of all the thoughts and ideas that pop through my head about what I could try with printmaking. And then again, it goes back to oil painting, but uh, yeah. Describe flying colors or like what flying colors is or how that came about. Oh, okay. Well, uh, it started out with a few of us getting together, just friends. And so it was a group of friends just enjoying each other's company and a few more people came and we just decided it was time to do something that was a little more formal and we could advertise it more and we could bring more workshops in. It is a very nurturing um, group of people. That's what we want it to be. 
um, and op opportunities for learning and supporting each other. Um, <laughs> there's not a competitive atmosphere at all. Mm -hmm. It's very supportive and exciting because this group of people, none of us are just, you know, kind of laid back, really. We are all enthusiastic about learning. And so the ideas just kind of bump, you know, around off of each other and things just get really happy things just get going. And it's mixed with socializing and learning, supporting, laughing, deep art talks, <laughs> critiquing. We do voluntary critiquing. Some, you know, people now, we're so comfortable with each other that if somebody has a problem or even wants a little validation, whatever the reason is, you know, you can bring your work in and show and tell. You can ask for a little, you know, hey, I'm, I'm having a trouble finishing this. Anybody have any ideas? We toss them out there and then the artist go, goes and does whatever he or she wants to do with it. Right. It's, um, it's just the most comfortable, happy, exciting, supportive <laughs> place. And, and no two um, get togethers are the same. You know, in the summer we're outside part of the time, inside part of the time. Mm -hmm. You just can't help but want to see what you can do, you yeah. know, and enjoy it. Sometimes it's it's active and chatty and other times you can hear a pin drop. In our little peace region, we have just about everything a person needs. It just kind of all boils down to I just want to become the best artist I can be. So it, it's again, the continued learning. And if things, you know, happy things happen along the way, that's icing on the cake. I always, along with wanting to learn as much as I can, I, I also want to participate in what's going on in the art world in our little area. Mm -hmm. So I want to always have something I can submit to every show we have up here. People used to ask us if we were going to leave Fort St. John, but I always said, well, you know, if we did leave, I'm sure I can find an art group. I'm, there are art groups everywhere. Yeah. But I thought, you know, I'll never find one like this. This is the epitome of what I imagine a group of artists, a community of artists would be like.
Thank you.